good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is Sir Hassan Dosani, and uh, welcome to our um, global webinar for SBL for September 2023 attempt. I'm really excited to um, have all of you here. And the focus of uh, you know this webinar is to talk more about the September pre-scene changes. I have updated my exam techniques. So that will be the main highlight of this webinar series. Uh, so let us not waste more time and let me share my screen so that we can start. All right, guys, are you able to see my screen cl clearly? Right, excellent, excellent. Okay, so let us start. So again, a big welcome to all of you in this uh, game, WIFI's Game Changing Webinar Series for SBL. My name is Hassan Dosani. And what is our game plan for the two days webinar? So we will quickly talk about an introduction to SBL. This is more applicable for those students who are giving the paper for the very first time. Then I will talk about um, the exam changes and the pre-seen material. We will spend good time on that so that you are really hands-on with the new exam format. Then I will talk through the various formats which are applicable in SBL. We will talk about professional skills. Then I will talk about exam techniques which are now revised and updated based on the um, September changes. So these five things we will cover today. And then tomorrow we will start with techniques from two students who scored 92 marks in SBL. So there were two students, one in March and one in June who scored 92 marks in SBL. So, uh, you know, I interviewed them and I have summarized their techniques, which I would love to share with you guys so that you can also benefit from these global prize winners. I will cover technical articles tomorrow. Uh, I, there's a recent technical article on project management. It's a big topic, project management, and it is very, very likely that a question will come on project management. So I will cover the topic project management tomorrow. And after that, we will do one comprehensive question from project management. And then I will in the end share a list of important topics and you know the study plan for the last three to four weeks, right? That is our game plan. Now, what about previous webinars? So obviously all topics cannot be covered in this webinar due to time limitation. So once you have watched this September 20323 webinars, I would suggest that if you have time, you should go through the December 2021 webinar, the March 2022 webinar, and March 2023 and June 2023 webinars, if you have time, okay? All right, so I really want you guys to ask a lot of questions because this is your chance to clarify any confusion or to clear any doubts, particularly about the new pre-scene changes, right? The way you can ask question is you need to type your question in the chat box because there are so many students, um, um, you know, it's difficult for me to have uh, verbal questions. So if you can type your questions, uh, after every two, three slides, I will stop and take, you know, respond to your questions. However, this is important that your questions should relate to the topic under discussion. So whatever slide is being discussed, your question should relate to that because I will not be able to deviate and jump to another topic in between, right? And if you have any general questions which are not answered by me in towards the end, we can have a Q&A session, right? 
Well, that's a quick introduction. Most of you know me by now. I've been, I'm a, I'm a CFO since last 12 years now. And I am working in Dubai in insurance company. And teaching is my passion. And I've been teaching for last 20 years. Uh, what's more important on this slide is my WhatsApp number. So please, if you don't have my WhatsApp number, please save this screen or this number so that you can get in touch with me through WhatsApp. Uh, guys, can I please request all of you to close your cameras or videos? All right, so I also have, I also manage a global SBL WhatsApp group. It's free, it's global. A lot of students are there. They help each other. They share material, they share information. So if you are already part of any of my global SBL group by Wi-Fi, then no need. But if you are not part of any um, of my WhatsApp groups, then you must join my WhatsApp group. This is the number. If you can message this number, they will add you to the group. Or in fact, what I can do is, um, um, how do I copy this? Uh, I might not be able to copy this. All right, so um, let me share the group details here. I'll, I'm sharing the WhatsApp group link in your chat box right now. Okay, so if if you know if you are um, not part of any any of the group, you can click and join this group, right? And I would request that if somebody asks for the link, you can one of you guys can share the link if requested on the chat. All right. So SBL pass rate, uh, June attempt, the last attempt, it was 51%, which is actually pretty good. But it has been pretty consistent between 49, 50, and 51. So nothing to worry about. No drastic changes. And, um, and in fact, SBL's pass rate is much better than other strategic level papers, right? So you stand a good chance to pass. All right, so SBL is very, very different. It's not difficult, but it's different. Different from your other ACCA papers, right? So it's very unique in the sense that, you know, it is one integrated case study that only one case study will be given and all the requirements will be relating to that one case study. Knowledge of topic is less important. Application of knowledge is more important. This is very important for SBL. A lot of students, they waste their time in, 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 in books, in theories, in syllabus, acquiring knowledge. But you know, the SBL is not about knowledge. It's about the application of knowledge. So <clears throat> this is where a lot of students, they struggle in SBL. Then there are 20 marks for professional skills, which means that 20% of your paper is professional skills. There is less emphasis on models. So again, a lot of students, they unnecessarily try to use models in most of the answers uh, that's not required. There are so many formats you need to be familiar with, like reports, briefing notes, memos, presentation slides, press release, emails, letters, project initiation documents. And then this one is really important. 50% of your paper is common sense, which means that you know this question does not pertain to any chapter, any model, any, any syllabus, any topic. It's common sense. You just need to read the exhibits and think logically and answer, right? 
So this, all these things collectively make SBL a very unique paper, nothing similar to what you have been given in the past. This is a very interesting slide. So many of my top scoring students, students who scored 70, 75, 80, even the two global prize winners, they applied this strategy. So it's very simple that when you are giving the SBL paper, do not think that you are a student. Change your mindset. Start imagining that you are the CFO of that organization. Obviously, you will become the CFO in few years time, right? So there is no harm in imagining your feeling that you are the finance director or the CFO of that company. And if you start thinking like a CFO, automatically your mind, it will become more mature. It will start thinking differently, more like from a business point of view rather than an accounting point of view, right? Mm -hmm. And always think, imagine that you are writing a report or explaining your point to the board of directors. Okay, that's very important. You are always writing or thinking to the board of directors. So think like a CFO and imagine that you are replying or discussing your thoughts with the board of directors. The moment you start doing this, you will automatically feel that your confidence level has improved and your way of thinking, your way of looking at things is much more different as compared to a simple bookish student. All right. Why students fail SBL? I have covered this many times, but just allow me to quickly go through it so that the new students are aware of the risks relating to SBL. So this is a list of the most common reasons why students, they fail SBL. And this list is based on examiners, various examiners reports, which I have gone through in detail, right? Secondly, this list is in order of priority, which means that number one point is the most important, then number two, then number three, right? So the most common reason is answers, as per the examiner, answers are not linked with exhibits. Often theoretical general answers are given. That's not acceptable in SBA. It's a case study. Exhibits have been provided. So it is expected that your answers will be in accordance with the exhibits. All right. Second reason is students, they merely copy paste materials from the exhibits without adding own comments or explaining why the point is important or relevant. Just copy pasting and moving on to the next point is not right. You need to explain your rationale, why, what is the impact on the business? What's the logic? You know, you need to add your own comments, your own thoughts. That's what the examiner wants to see, whether your mind understands the case study or not. The third most common reason is overspending time on one particular question, not mostly question number one, and I call it time trap question. Okay, so I see 90% of the students, they tend to overspend time on any one particular question. And by the time they realize they have already spent 15, 20 minutes extra on that question, and then they get panicked. And then, you know, less time is left to do the remaining questions, right? So, Time management is absolutely critical. You should not fall in the time trap. And then most students are not completing the entire paper due to bad time management, due to the time trap thing. If you don't complete SBL full 100 marks, it's difficult to pass, right? Yeah, I can understand if you miss out three or four marks, 
but some students they attempt 80 marks only some students they attempt 85 marks only so if you just attempt 85 marks it's very very difficult to pass sbl so the key message here is time management is absolutely critical and i will talk about time management techniques in detail uh, in a little bit Right. And then the easier ones, I will just quickly read them. Poor technical knowledge or professional skills knowledge, insufficient number of points according to the marks, students not doing practice or mocks on the CBE platform. I think this one is important, actually, that, you know, you students do not, do, you know, students, 80% of the time they spend on on theory and books and chapters, and they spend 20% of the time on doing the actual practice and mocks on the CBE platform. That's wrong. It should be the other way around. 80% of the time you should spend in actual practice on the CBE platform and 20% of your time you should spend on the topics. And then weak typing and formatting skills, that's fine. If you have average typing speed, you are good. So obviously, if you if you do a lot of practice on the CBE platform, by default, your typing skills will improve, right? All right, any questions? All right, nothing. Again, a very quick slide that this is for those students um, who were not fortunate in the previous attempts. They are research students in September. So basically, you know, it's just a guide that if you obtained less than 45 marks, it shows that you have weak technical knowledge. But if you obtain marks between 45 and 49, it shows that you have good technical knowledge. But you did not, you know, there was some insufficient practice or you did not give proper mock exams. You need to spend more time on practice. So my uh, revision batch is going to start on 8th of August, which is the coming Tuesday, in which I will be focusing 100% on drafting, practice, mocks, and all those things. So those research students who want to just improve their drafting, improve their practice, I think this course will be extremely useful for you. I will share the details towards the end. Right, now comes the tricky part. Exam changes in SBL from September. Um, just let me see if there are any questions. Guys, as I said in the start, please, your question should pertain to the slide under discussion. I will not be able to take questions which are not relating to the current topic, right? So I will cover all this as we go along. Right. So the first thing is there is a lot of misconception. A lot of students are saying there's a change in the syllabus. No. There is no change in the syllabus, okay? Only the paper pattern is changing. There is no change in the syllabus. Only the paper pattern is changing, which means that whatever case study, whatever past papers we have, it's 100% applicable because there is no change in the syllabus, right? The case study will be published two weeks before the exam, okay? And then, you know, students are expected to fully understand the activities of that organization and the industry, familiarizing themselves with the terms and activities included. So obviously the purpose of sharing the case study in advance so that the students can understand that organization, its external environment, its challenges, okay? 
And then on the exam day, additional information and exhibits along with the tasks will be given. Paper duration reduced to three hours and 15 minutes. You know, previously this paper was four hours and now they have reduced it to three hours and 15 minutes. Any idea why they have reduced the duration? Can you guess? Why they have reduced the durations? Can you guess? Start thinking, guys. Be logical. Be common sense. Start thinking like a CFO. So obviously, yes, because they are sharing the case study two weeks in advance. So you are expected to read the case study in your own time. So that is why they have reduced the exam timing by 45 minutes, because that's the time which is required to read that case study, right? So now it's, if it is already published two weeks before, so you're expected to read it before you go to your exams, right? So that is why they have reduced the timing. So it's nothing to worry about. Okay, number of exhibits will be significantly reduced because they will share most of the things in the pre-seen material. There will be only three questions. Tasks will be there with parts. Okay, so there will be total three questions, but they might have different number of parts within each of them. Okay. Each professional skill will be tested only once and will be worth four marks. So previously in the previous SBL paper, the professional skills were of two marks as well. But now it's very straightforward. Each skill will be tested once with full four marks. Nothing to worry about. Tasks will no longer be answered in a single, this is important, Tasks will no longer be answered as a single word response to. Each task will have a separate answer sheet and it will no longer be possible to view all tasks together. Right? So in the previous SBL style, there was just one word processor document and all the answers were supposed to be typed in that one document and you had to you know write the task number and then the answer then the task number and then the answer everything was on one word document but now there are three questions so there will be three word documents one will be the answer tool for question number 1 second will be the answer tool for question number two and similarly for the third one okay and you will not be able to view all the tasks in one go but you know as as it happens in other papers like pm and all those things you know you can navigate you can move forward to go to the next screen to watch the second task and then again you can uh, you know, navigate and go to the next screen to watch the third task. And then you can always come back or navigate back, right? Any questions? Uh, Pre-seen material will also be available on the exam day on the CBE platform. So whatever pre-seen material was shared two weeks before, it will also be there on the CBE platform as well. So you don't have to memorize the important lines or facts and figures. Now, any questions relating to these changes? I'm just going through the questions, please. I think these changes are actually beneficial for students because previously we had no clue what case study will come, what industry, what kind of, you know, a company. Sometimes it was a fitness gym, sometimes it was a non-profit organization, sometimes it was a hotel. But now beforehand, we will exactly know what is the company, what does it do, what's the industry like. So there is no surprise element we can prepare beforehand so i think this change is actually 
going to make SBA a little bit easy. Yes, the pre-seen material will be available on your CBE platform. Okay. Yes, the tasks are never linked. The tasks are all independent tasks. Time management, I will cover under exam techniques. Ignore the red one, doesn't matter. I'm just going through some comments. Oh my God, there's so many comments. I think most of the questions I will address as we go along, right? Right now, do you have any questions on the slide we discussed? Who's this? Muhammad Ahmed. Please don't do this. Do not type your comments. I've seen your comment. I will cover it later on. Do not repeat your comments three, four times, okay? It is flooding my chat screen. I've seen all your questions and whatever questions I will be answering as we go along, I will answer at that time. So don't worry. All the questions are covered in today's presentation. All right, just wait. All right. Now, pre-seen material. Nidhi, I will not be taking questions through mic. You need to type your question, okay? Just type your question in the chat box. Let's take a quick look at the ACCA CBE platform and the pre-seen paper format. So obviously the CBE layout has slightly changed. So let's open up the CBE platform. Actually, I will open up for you. And we will take a look at the SBL specimen paper one valid for September 2023 attempt. Okay, so I have it somewhere here. Yeah. All right, guys, are you able to see the MyCBE platform with this beautiful girl on the screen? Right. All right. So guys, this webinar is being recorded and it will be uploaded in YouTube in a couple of days. So don't worry. And I will also share my handouts in the various groups. All right. Don't worry. That's the standard format. All right. So strategic business leader, ACCA official resources. Let's go to specimen exam and let's look at this one, SBL specimen one valid from September 23 onwards. Okay, this one. So if I go down and if I open it, I will resume it. Excellent. So this is how when you will now open your CB platform on the day of your exam, this is how uh, your screen will look okay so let's go to the left side so you will have exhibits so in this case there are four exhibits right in the previous paper the number of exhibits was like seven or eight but in the new format the number of exhibits will reduce so you know you will see some exhibits here in this particular mattress staff survey email from hr email from director finance these are the four exhibits given in the specimen paper then you see this pre-seen information which was shared with you two weeks back it will also be available here so let's click on the pre-seen here so here's the pre-seen thing. You see, there are so many, con look at the contents here. Introduction, 
industry. So you can see the industry information is there. Introduction is there. Introduction, industry information, then followed by board structure, IT products, our suppliers, our manufacturing, distribution, and rest. And then there's something about our website. Um, and then some financial is given. This is all pre-seen. So this you will have two weeks before. So I'll just quickly scroll down. So introduction will tell us what we do, blah, blah, blah. Then there's a lot of information about the industry, right? Industry information overview, uh, our mattress, our products. And then industry challenges and developments. What are the current industry challenges? Innovation and sustainability. All this is about the industry as a whole. Key performance indicator, ensure industry body. Then the third part is the company's background, the ownership, the board structure, IT. What are the various products? Who are our key suppliers? Manufacturing, how we do the manufacturing, how we do distribution, retail partners, direct to customers. What are the key risks which we are facing? And then something about our website, our mission, this and that, and some financials. So around 11 pages, of information has been provided two weeks before, right? So it will you it will be accessible through here. So this eleven pages of information plus these relevant exhibits, extra exhibits will be there, and then the task will be there. So you see, the only task number one is there. You will open the task at the same thing, and you will read the task, right? And then the word processor is there for task number one. So in the exam, I would imagine that, you know, once uh, there'll be three tasks and three word processors, three spreadsheet, three slides. Okay, any questions on the form CBE platform according to the new changes? So. Before I wind up this, just look at the size of the pre-scene. It's 11 pages and it's really comprehensive. A lot of data about the industry, a lot of data about the company and all these things, right? So you, be, you, know, you guys will need to spend a good eight to 10 hours reading and understanding this entire case study. It's very, very important. Otherwise, you will struggle during your exam. Do you agree that you need to uh, spend at least five, eight to 10 hours getting a good grip on the pre scene material, right? <sighs> All right, so let us go back. So we took a look at the CBE format. Now, September 2023 pre-seen case study will be published on 22nd of August. This is the official date announced by ACCA. When they will publish this case study for the exam, it will be published on 22nd of August. You will receive an email notification that the pre seen material is available. You will be notified through email on 22nd of August. How do you access SBL pre seen material? So you need to go through this to access the information. Please follow these instructions. Go to the exam planner. <laughs> So through your my ACCA, you will need to go through your exam planner 
click on SBL booklet exam details within your plan and then click on the download links to the pre-seen information. Okay, this is how you will be able to download it. And then SBL pre-seen information must be downloaded from the exam planner. Do not access this document from any other source, right? So please download uh, from your exam planner. And if you face any problem, so there is a video which ACCA has published. It's a three minute video. This is the link in which they have actually shown you how you will go to your exam planner and then how will you download, okay? Any questions on this? I will share my file on the WhatsApp group after the webinar, okay? Uh, Yakub is asking, would the pre-scene be different for all students? I don't think so. I think the pre-scene material will be same for all students globally. However, the exhibits might be different and the tasks might be different due to various time zone issues uh, so that the students don't uh, cheat or share with other students. So pre-scene will be same, but exhibits and tasks might be different. Yes, the pre-scene format will be more or less the same as we just saw on the CBE platform. Okay, right. Now, this is a very important slide. I will be conducting a two-day workshop once the September 2023 pre-scene case study is published. All right. So right now, uh, we don't have the September pre-scene material. It will be published on 22nd of August. All right. So after that, once it's published, I will be conducting a two-day workshop. The dates of the workshop is 29th and 30th August between 7 to 10 p.m. Pakistan time, right? What this workshop, workshop will include, I will do a detailed discussion and understanding of the case study with the students in a live class, all right? We will go through the lengthy You've seen how lengthy it is, how comprehensive we, uh, the material is. So we will go through each and every heading. We will discuss so that we all understand the scenario, the industry, the company, the risk whatsoever. I will also make a summary pointers for quick revision. So obviously from that pre-seen material, I will extract some important basic information so that on the last day, it's easy for you to revise or memorize. And then I will also try to think of possible questions, like we can do a pestle, we can try to do a porter, we can try to do risk management. So whatever in my experience, I'm able to think of potential likely questions. We can discuss various scenarios, what type of questions, so that in case something strikes in the exam, you know what to do. And then this workshop will also include a grand revision three days before the exam, right? So I think this will be a paid workshop. I'm still in discussion with my college management because obviously like, uh, you know, it's very intensive. Um, so I will publish more information about this at a later stage, but I do plan to spend like six, eight hours on the pre-scene after it has been published so that we are all very familiar with the scenario and we are able to, you know, uh, visualize possible questions and tasks so that we don't struggle that much in the real exam. All right, those students who are already 
uh, in my September paid batch, either at the regular batch, or if you have enrolled in the reset batch, or you have enrolled in the revision batch, those of you who are enrolled in my paid batch, this session is included in your package. You don't have to register or enroll or pay anything extra for this. Uh, but those students who have not been, who are not my students for September, like my paid students, and if you just want to attend this particular session, then you can, you know, attend this workshop. I'm not sure whether it will be free for you guys or there will be some investment, but I will work it out at a later stage once we are near the time. No, the recording of this paid workshop will not be available publicly because, you know, it's, it's quite sensitive um, because we will be discussing possible questions. So it's a bit risky to make this uh, publicly available. I hope you understand. All right. All right, done. So uh, we understood the pre scene changes in a lot of detail right you guys are clear nothing to worry about in fact i think it's easier because we will know in advance and i will be spending uh you know a separate dedicated two days on the pre seen material uh once it's published so i will simplify it for you so that it becomes easier for you right right so uh, now you guys think are you ready to um do an sbl question <laughs> right uh yes mohammed ahmed i will make sure don't worry huh all right so next is formats so sbl has a lot of formats and you need to be really really hands on with all the formats so the first and the most commonly tested format is the report format, the briefing paper format. Sometimes it is called briefing note, sometimes it's called memo. So for all these four things, there is one simple format. Okay, one simple format. Two, you will need to mention two. So you will start, you will give the heading report on the top, or if it's a briefing paper, you will write briefing paper on the top. And then, and then there will be a to, there will be a from, there will be a subject and a date followed by introduction and then the closure. Okay. This is the standard simple format for any report report, any briefing paper, any briefing note or a memo. Just change the main heading according to the question. So two, you will, you will need to write who the report is addressed to. You will find it from the requirement or the task. It will be clearly mentioned there. Throw, <laughs> excuse me, guys. From, you will have to mention your role, okay? Your, again, your role will be mentioned somewhere in the scenario. Subject, you can easily copy paste the keywords from the requirement. If it is an external environment, you write external environment. If it is risk management, you write risk management, okay? And date. So there's a lot of students are confused about date. So there are two possible scenarios. The first scenario is that any date is already given in the scenario in the case study, right? So if any date is mentioned in the case study, then you will write that date. For example, in some of the cases, it was mentioned that it is September 20H2. It is May 202X1. So just write September 20X2 or May 20X1. Whatever date or month or year has been provided, just use that. 
Another possibility is that there is no date mentioned anywhere in your case study. So in that case, you will write this word today. Okay, you will not, you are not supposed to write the actual date on of the paper. You will just write today. Is that clear? Is the date things clear, guys? Okay. All right. Again, in the in the two, if any name is given, you can write the name. If the name is not given and the role is given, then you write the role, like the finance director or operations director or the CEO. It depends. But if the name is given, then it's always better to write the name of the person. Right? This is how it happens in the real life. If I'm writing a report or a memo to someone, obviously I will address him by the name, right? Not by the designation. But if the name is not given, then you just write the designation, all right? So introduction, you can easily copy paste from the questions, right? And then actual answer starts. So this is your actual answer. You will give the main heading and draft your answer in this portion. Is that clear? After introduction and before the closure will be the body of your answer, depending on the requirement. Okay. Now, conclusions or recommendation not required unless specifically mentioned in the question. So, please try to avoid any conclusion in your report. Do not give any conclusion or recommendation in the report or any briefing paper or the memo until and unless the question specifically says, give a conclusion or give a recommendation, then obviously you'll have to give. But if the question is silent, do not give any conclusion or recommendation by default on your own. All right. Any questions on the report format? John, that's perfectly fine. It's all right, petty matter. Okay, let's move to the next format. Now, a couple of times the examiner has said, draft a section of a report. He doesn't want a full report. He's saying draft a section of a report. So very, that's actually the most simplest format. You will give the top heading as section of a report. No to, no from, maybe you can, maybe you can uh, give subject here. Okay. Uh, how do you write subject? Yeah. Maybe I would prefer that, you know, uh, you give subject, introduction, and then your answer. That's it. All right, guys, very simple section of a report. The third format is draft an email. Again, very simple like report, just we will give the top heading email to from subject date and then an opening sentence, this email, blah, blah, blah and then your answer, and then the closure. Very same like report format, just the heading will change and there is no formal subheading for introduction. All right, presentation slides, many times, almost in every attempt, the examiner has asked you to prepare presentation slides. So presentation slides have two components. Presentation slides have um, two components. One, this one, uh, which is the actual slide. And the second component is called the supporting notes or the accompanying notes. 
understood presentation slide has two parts or two portions one is the actual slide and below the slide will be the supporting notes let me show you on the cb platform as well so here in the response tool if there's a question on presentation slides you will then use slides instead of word processor so i will click uh, click on slide and it will open like this you see this slide number one and then what is underneath slide number one speaker note as i said there are two portions the actual slide which is slide number one followed by speaker note for slide number one then there is slide number two followed by speaker notes for slide number two is that clear a presentation slide will always have two components one is the actual slide uh, one is the actual slide this one and one is the supporting notes or accompanying notes understood now so what is the difference between the slide and the supporting notes so how many of you have ever seen a presentation, a real life presentation, or you have made a presentation? Please type me. Let's see. How many of you have ever actually seen a presentation in any conference, in any school or any meeting, or you have made a presentation? So many people, very nice. So what is the difference between a slide and a supporting note? So a presentation slide will only have bullet points, you see. It will not have lengthy stories. So the purpose of a slide is just to show the bullet points. But then where is the explanation? The explanation of these points will be under the supporting notes, right? So there are three points on the slide. I would expect three paragraphs under supporting notes. The first paragraph will talk about the first bullet. The second paragraph will talk about the second bullet. And the third paragraph will talk about the third bullet. It's just a different way of presenting your answer rather than directly typing. The headings will be mentioned on the slide and their explanation will be mentioned under supporting notes. Is that clear? Very good. And you know, you need to practice it. The more you will practice this on the CBE platform, the more grip and confidence you will have. SBL, 80% of the time you need to practice because it seems easy, but when you're actually doing it on your own, on the CB platform, you might get panic or you might be really slow, right? So please, 80% of the time you must spend on practice and 20% of the time on theories. Next one is letter. This is only tested, I think, once or maximum twice in the last 20 attempts. So it's not really important, but I think you should know what the format is. Again, you will give the heading letter, date. Instead of writing two, you will directly write the person's name. This is the addressee, subject. Opening sentence like this letter, blah, 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 the actual answer and then the closure. Very similar to the report format, just some minor changes. But it's like a letter, not a report, right? But the main components are almost the same. Yes, Nafisa, you are right. Okay. Then there is something called a press release or a website release. So what is a press release or a website release? It is an announcement made by the company for the public. If the company is making some 
announcement for for the people to know they will publish either on in the press in the newspapers or they might publish it on their own website so it's called press release or website release it's got a specific format obviously to from subject date would not be there like a report format but you will just give the heading press release or a website release as the case may be then the 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 topic what the heading main heading what the release is all about the name of the chairman or the ceo who is making this press release the name of the company and the date of the press release you might need to um you might need to remember this a bit huh this bit you might need to remember that our press release will have number one subject next line the name of the person like from who is publishing this normally either it's the chairman or the ceo you and me are not allowed to make press release only the ceo or the chairman are allowed to make press release the name of our company and the date of the press release this will be the start like through this press release we would like to share our views regarding blah 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 and then your body of the answer and the closure will be like this for further information please contact our public relations department so you this is slightly different format than the rest which we discussed earlier so you might need to memorize this i will share this template after the webinar yes hamid it will be deducted all right then there is something called business case um this relates to project management a business case is a document which is used in project management okay a business case has three broad headings current situation the proposed option and pros and cons of the proposed option i will cover this in more detail tomorrow because i will be covering the topic project management again there is something called project initiation document um these are the contents of a project initiation document you will need to memorize these this content of a pid and i will cover this in more detail in tomorrow's webinar because tomorrow our main focus is project management as it was it, as it had a technical article right then in almost every attempt there is a question on identify weakness and give recommendation 90% of the time i have seen this question identify weakness and give recommendation whenever you guys get a question on identify weakness and give recommendation please use a tabular format some very simple table on the left side we will talk about the weakness and its impact or coins consequence and on the right side we will mention the recommendation similarly if you get a question on identify risks and give recommendation again i would suggest a tabular format simple the risks and its consequence on the left side and mitigation factors on the right side if you use tabular format it will simplify things for you it will speed up things for you and the presentation or the layout of your answer will be very structured okay no suman you will not prepare this table on the spreadsheet guys for sbl there is no need for using the spreadsheet stay away from spreadsheet okay if you are if you want to make a table directly on the word there is an option for table i will just show you so if i open the word processor on the cbe platform okay you see here is the table 
just click here you click on table i want two columns and six rows it will be here as simple as that and then you can type on the table you will write uh, weakness here and you will write recommendation and then you will start your answer all right All right, so I'm done with the formats. Any question on format? So the most, let me recap. Most important is report, format, briefing note, briefing paper, memo, section of a report. These are the most commonly tested. And then presentation slides. This is the most frequently tested. And then the little ones like uh, letter, email, press release, all these things, okay? All right, good guys. Now, are you guys ready for an SBL question? Mm, um, Ram Misra, FAO means for attention of, but forget about it, just write two. Yes, you will get a break after the next slide, okay? What time is it? Okay. Right, so no, guys, you are still not ready for the paper because you have not understood professional marks. Can anybody tell me what percentage of your paper, what percentage of your total marks is professional skills? Excellent, excellent. So you see uh, one fifth, one fifth of your paper is professional skills. So when students, when they ask me, sir, what is the most important topics? Can you predict the topics for next attempt? I say the most important topic is professional skills because sure shot, there will be a question worth 20 marks relating to professional skills. I call them cash marks. What do I call them? cash marks they are easy marks they are low hanging fruits you can if you know the technique you can easily grab good professional marks so if you are able to score 15 14 marks 15 marks out of 20 that's really a good start right so so if you are able to score 15 marks out of 20 then you just need 35 more marks to pass the paper, right? So it's very, very absolutely critical that you score at least 15 marks in professional skills out of 20 so that, you know, you're able to easily pass the paper. So I will now talk about professional skills and I will tell you, I will try to explain to you in very simple manner from a practical exam point of view, right? So there is a lot of fancy definitions. Forget about fancy definitions. I will give you very simple technique, which is practical in the exam, right? So there are five professional skills in SBL, evaluation skill, analysis skill, then communication skill, commercial acumen skill and skepticism skill. Okay, these are the five skills. And in the start, I have discussed that now they will, each skill carries four marks. Four fives are 20 marks. Okay. Right, so evaluation skill, all you need to make sure is that you cover both pros and cons in your answer. That's it. Mention both pros and cons in your answer. So obviously, if there is an exhibit, there is a lot of information. 
uh, if the requirement says demonstrate evaluation skill, then you are expected to talk about both positive points and negative points. Both should be there in your answer. Is that clear? Is that clear? Now, the second thing is for evaluation skill, the pros and cons, do they need to be in equal quantity? Like five, so if I am supposed to give 10 points, five pros and five cons, is that mandatory to be equal? No. There is no concept of equal pros and cons in real life in SBL. It all depends on the availability of information in the exhibits. If in the exhibit there are more pros and less cons, let's say seven pros and three cons, that is perfectly fine as long as you include both pros and cons. Also, in the scenario, if there is more negative points and less positive points, then it could be vice versa. Three pros, seven cons. It's absolutely fine. Even one pro and nine cons is absolutely fine. As long as you make sure that you have included both in your answers, the mix or the quantity doesn't matter. Is that clear? No, Tommy. As I said, no recommendation or our viewpoint. Okay, so done. Evaluation is one simple technique. Make sure that you include both pros and cons in your drafting. Analysis skills. Identify the reasons or issues. So analysis means investigate, right? So supposing, let's take a real example. Supposing you are the CEO. Supposing you are the CEO. I am the finance director or the CFO. You are CEO, I am CFO. We are all sitting in a boardroom, clear? And I made a presentation. I said that our revenue has fallen by 10% as compared to last year. You know, I am showing the PNL and I'm saying, I told the board that our revenues have reduced by 10% over last year. So if you are the CEO, what question will you ask? Come on, guys. We'll say why the revenue has fallen. What's the reason? Correct? You will simply ask, Mr. CF. Oh, you are saying the revenue has fallen. Why? Why has the revenue gone down? What's wrong? What went wrong? Right? Reason. The reason is analysis. The reason is basically called analysis. Then I will, as a CFO, I will dig down and I will try to identify, I will try to investigate why the hell the sales have gone down? No, Richard, don't complicate stuff. Right? So whenever we drill down, whenever we look at the reason, we, whenever we try to identify the reason for anything or the root cause for anything, that's analysis skills. So what can be the possible reasons for a fall in sales? What do you think? Give me one reason in your mind. Why sales have gone down? One possible reason. Poor, oh my God, very nice. I like the answers. Less units sold, idiot, who's that? 
less units so obviously that's understood but why less units sold come on think like think big competition recession change in customer taste or poor product quality or maybe bad pricing or outdated the excellent poor customer service very nice bad image customer affordability bad excellent so these are the various reasons so as long as you talk about these reasons in your answer you will automatically get analysis skills marks is that understood So you don't have to do anything extra. Analysis means you have to identify the reasons or the root cause. So if my customer satisfaction, if, if my customer sat, if my staff satisfaction survey is deteriorating, okay, I repeat, if my staff satisfaction survey is deteriorating, if I identify the reasons, that's analysis skills. Simple. Whenever we are supposed to look at the reasons, the root cause, that's analysis skills. So are we very clear on these two skills? Evaluation skills means you need to include both pros and cons. Analysis skills, you need to identify the reasons. From where you will identify the reasons? Any idea from where you can get the reasons from? The exhibits, the scenario, obviously, everything will be there. You just need to identify the reason and then bring it in your answer and then explain in your own words. That's it. Financial figures. No, Nidhi. What do you mean by financial figures? The business information. Okay, the next two are also very simple. Communication skill, you know, obviously it's very simple. Communication means that your tone, your language, your drafting is in a professional manner. Okay. The format you are using should be nice. And most importantly, you will need to understand the, your, the addressee to whom you are writing and what is your role. If you understand that you are writing to the CEO and you are a finance director, obviously your tone, your language will be in that manner, right? So nothing much needs to be done. As long as you write plain, simple English, keep in mind the addressee and your role and use a nice format, like example, it's a report format. So draw a proper format. You will automatically get marks on communication skill, right? So it means use appropriate format, whatever format has been mentioned in the requirement. Keep in mind your role, whether you are internal person or external consultant, the general layout and tone of your answer. Nothing extra needs to be done. Just professional language, balanced language, simple English, nice format, and keep the your role and address it in your mind. The fourth one is commercial acumen. Oh, I'm tired. Commercial acumen means your business knowledge or business know-how. So do you think a good CFO should be able to understand the entire business? Yes or no? Or a good accountant or a good CFO has to understand the nature of the business, right? Otherwise, how will he do the budgets? So when we are preparing the budget, 
it starts with revenues and then cost of sales and then marketing and overheads. So I need to be aware of all various business aspects. Okay, I, I should just not know IFRS and debit and credit. I'm expected to understand the whole business. So now, few minutes back, few minutes back, I asked you guys, what can be the reason for fall in sales? And you gave me so many possible answers, right? Competition, bad product, bad marketing, recession. That is commercial acumen, simple. When you talk about these things, you are demonstrating to the examiner that you understand the business. That's it. Can anybody tell me what, what are the advantages of e-commerce online? So should we go for online business? What can be the advantage? So right now there's a company which is just physical. Should we go, for, should they start an online division? What are the advantages? Oh my God, excellent. Low cost, globalization, personalized marketing, quicker, 24 seven. Excellent. This is commercial acumen. You guys just demonstrated commercial acumen that you know the business. You are not debit credit accountants. You know the basics of the business. Okay, shall we go for outsourcing? Shall I have a, shall I outsource my production to a cheaper country? I'm right now in a very expensive country. Shall I outsource my accounting function and back office to cheaper countries? Why? Very good. So if I outsource to India or Philippines or Pakistan, I am based in Europe, how will I connect with them? How will I connect with them? Will they be able to access my systems? Yeah, online. How will I talk to them? Social media, fuck you. Social media, crazy man. Will I be able to talk to them? Yeah, team, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Intra. This is all commercial acumen, emails, yeah. This is all commercial acumen. Cloud, oh, very interesting. WhatsApp, business of, yeah, this is, so you guys, you guys have commercial acumen. It's just that you don't know about it or you don't know what it is called. This is all commercial acumen that you talk from a business point of view, not like a debit credit accounting point of view. So again, nothing extra needs to be done in commercial acumen. Just think common sense and the impact on the business and it's done. You will score good marks in commercial acumen. Guys, any questions on communication skill and commercial acumen? Is this very clear? Faika, I will answer that later. Please ask questions, which is on the slide right now. All right. How many times I have to say that? The last one is called skepticism skill. In my view, I think this, this one is the most difficult. In my view, this skill is the most difficult. So the first four skills were not difficult. They were pretty easy. Evaluation means pros and cons. Analysis means identify the reasons. Communication means 
professional language and formats. Commercial acumen means talk about, you know, the impact on the business. Very simple. But the fifth one is called skepticism skills. This is slightly tricky, but I'll try to make it simplify for you. First of all, what is the meaning of the word skepticism, skeptical? Skeptical means to doubt someone. Skeptical means to doubt someone, to challenge someone, to question someone. So for example, ladies, supposing uh, there, are, there are so many ladies out there, if you are married or if you have a boyfriend, and uh, yes, Ibrahim, well said. Ibrahim is saying wife material. Yes, skepticism is wife material. So you see, I'll, I'll tell you my examples that, you know, normally I come home from my office around between six and seven, <clears throat> right? And then when I come late or continuously late, my wife, my wife, she gets skeptical. She will start asking me questions. Where are you? Why you are so late? You see? What were you doing? How long this will go? Da, da, da. She just want to satisfy herself that there is no hanky-panky. Skepticism. Okay. How do we demonstrate skepticism skill in, in the boardroom? Good Shikha. So how do we demonstrate as a CFO, we must have skepticism skills. We should not ex accept any information without verifying. So in the, in the board, how can I demonstrate skepticism skills? By challenging, by questioning, by looking at the assumptions, interrogation, cross-questioning, disagreeing. Yeah, Rash, asking for rationale, very good. So for example, if marketing, so I let's say another example. I am the marketing director and you are the CFO. Okay. I am the marketing director and you are the CFO and we are all in the boardroom. So I'm marketing director. I am just I just said that you know if we launch this new product, our revenue will double. As a marketing, my job is to increase product and revenue. So I will say, if we launch this new product, our revenue will double. Don't worry, just invest in this product. I guarantee you our revenue will double. Would you accept this sentence on its face value? No, right? You will ask me some questions. You will try to understand. You will try to dig deep to understand on what basis I am claiming this, right? So you will ask me questions. You will say, what is the basis? <clears throat> you will, uh, if I am the CFO, I will ask him, okay, can you, can you first tell me how many units will we sell? Because sales is driven by volumes or units, right? So I will say, fine. So if we have a law, if you, if you launch a new product, can you tell me how many units we will sell in the first year? How many units we will sell in the second year? And, and then I will ask him, what is the selling price you have in mind? So I will then multiply the units with the price to see. And then I will challenge the units as well. I will say, what is the basis? How you, how you know that this much units will be sold? Have you done any market research? Do we have any similar case study? What is the basis? 
yeah, I will give the mass break in five minutes. Right. So skepticism skill is where you don't accept anything on face value. You will try to ask questions to make sure that that information is authentic. Okay. Right. So how do we demonstrate in the exam? Adopt a questioning tone in your answer. You can ask a question when you are drafting. You can put a question mark. So whenever you put a question mark, it means that you are questioning something or asking a question that is skepticism. Or you can also use words like I disagree or it seems incorrect or it's not clear or it should be further investigated or it should not appropriate. So these words where you are showing that you are not sure, you want to dig deeper, you want to probe more, if you will have to deliberately use these kind of words or in your sentences to demonstrate skepticism in your drafting. Many students, they forget to ask questions. They forget to use negative words like it's incorrect, I disagree, it's, it's inappropriate when you are drafting. So please make sure when there is skepticism involved, you must use few negative words in your answer. Your answer might be right, but if you don't use the negative words, you will not get skepticism marks. So you have to deliberately or consciously make sure that there are some negative words or some questions in your drafting. It's not difficult. It's just that students, they forget because they are under time pressure to, you know, draft in a negative tone. Guys, any questions? Are you all very, very, very clear on professional skills? All right. All right. So let's move to the next portion of our slide, which is most important. It is exam techniques. Okay. So, so far we have covered the formats not difficult. We have covered the professional skills, not difficult. The third important part of SBL is exam techniques. This is where most of the students, they panic. They panic in the exam duration because of the stress situation and they are not able to fully apply these techniques, right? So let's talk about exam techniques and I have revised my previous techniques to bring it in line with the new duration and the new format of September paper. So the first thing I would want to talk about is time management. If you remember, in my earlier slide of today, uh, one of the most common reasons why students fail SBL is bad time management because of time trap questions. They, they tend to give more time on one question and in the end, they are not able to complete the paper. So in my view, time management is the biggest killer of SBL. Many students, they struggle with time management. So I want to start with this first. Right, so the allowed, total allowed time is three hours and 15 minutes, correct? Okay. Three, one, 
um 180 plus 15 is sorry this is one is 195 minutes not 210 minutes my mistake so the actual allowed time is three hours and 15 minutes so what we will do is we will spend the first 15 minutes in reading and planning and the remaining three hours for drafting. Is that clear? That is my strategy that we will spend 15 minutes in reading and planning because we will have to read the extra exhibits. We will have to read um, the requirements. We need to decide, plan various things. So the first 15 minutes, I suggest that you allocate for reading and planning. And the next remaining full three hours, we will do on drafting. Okay. So what to what you should do in the first 15 minutes? First of all, you will copy paste all tasks in the respective answer sheets. Okay. Why do I say respective answer sheet? Because I had mentioned in the start, that there will be three tasks or three questions and there will be three answer sheets, one for each question, right? So I want you to read the task, I mean, copy the task onto the respective answer sheet. Then you read the task to identify the topics. So obviously we need to know what are the questions, what are we supposed to look for so we will read the requirements very quickly so that we exactly know what are the topics. Maybe it is pastel, maybe it is IT, maybe it is risk management, maybe it is culture, maybe it is stakeholder, who knows? So I need to exactly know what are the topics being asked. After that, once I know that these are the five, six, seven topics, which I need to look for, take a quick look at the exhibits and note exhibit number on the respective answer sheet. So obviously, you know, it's not practical to read the all the exhibits in 15 minutes. But I want you to just take a quick look, just to take a feeler. Okay, this exhibit is about what? And in which question this exhibit pertains to? For example, let me go to the CBE platform again. So I know that these are the exhibits. For example, staff survey results. So if there's a question, something to do with staff survey, I know that I can use this exhibit in that question, right? So this is very important that you take a quick look at the exhibit to understand what has been provided and then note the exhibit number on the respective answer sheet that when I will do this particular question, I will need to refer to this particular exhibit. This is called cross-referencing, okay? And then based on this, decide the sequence of your answers. Easier questions first. So it is, so I want, so there are three questions, right? One option is that you attempt them in sequential order that you do question number one first, then you do question number two, and then you do question number three. That's the sequential order. The other possibility is that you take a look at all the questions and then you decide which one is the easiest and which one is the most difficult in your personal view. And you should start with the most easiest one in which you are most confident you know the topic, you have identified the exhibit, it looks straightforward, start with that. It can be question number two, it can be question number three, it can be question number one. And then 
you do the second, uh, then you do the next difficult question and the most difficult question you keep in the last. All right. This is how you can avoid falling in time trap because you are keeping the most tricky question towards the last. So I will repeat, what do we do in the first 15 minutes? We will copy the requirements. We will read the requirements just to understand what are the topics. We will go through the exhibits to see which exhibits fits or pertains to which question. And then most importantly, I will decide which question I will start first and then second and then third. Any questions till here? Any questions on the first 15 minutes? Okay. I would like to clarify that you will not be able to read the exhibits in the first 15 minutes. It's humanly not possible to read three or four exhibits along with planning. So the purpose here is not to read exhibit line by line because it, you will not be able to do it in 15 minutes. The purpose here is planning just to understand the requirement to identify the relevant exhibits, which question links to which exhibit, and most importantly, to prioritize, to decide which question should I start with, which one is the most easiest, then the second one and the third one. All this is possible in 15 minutes, but do not try to read the exhibits line by line. Just take a feeler so that you are at least able to identify which question this particular exhibit pertains to. You think it's doable in 15 minutes? Yes or no? Yes, copy all tasks. Don't you understand plain English? Copy all the requirements on the respective answer sheet so that you don't have to go again and again here and there. So in 15 minutes, you will quickly copy the tasks, take a quick look at the exhibit so that you're able to identify which exhibit belongs to which task, and then prioritize your uh, attempt that which question you will start with. It will only come from practice. Huh? That's true. Now, once you are done with the 15 minutes, you exactly know two things. At the end of 15 minutes, you will know two things. Number one, which exhibit pertains to which requirement. And number two, you know which question you will start first. Agreed? Now the allowed drafting time is 1.8 minutes per total marks. Okay, the important word is total marks, not technical marks, not professional marks, but total marks. Total marks means one point eight minute per total mark. So let's see the CBE paper. Let's apply this and. Um, So, uh, sorry, guys, I lost connection. Are you guys able to see me and hear me clearly? I'm rejoining. All right, let me share my screen and do some basic stuff.
All right. So if you look at the exam paper, Kotas number 1A, what is the total marks for 1A? Can anybody type here? What is the marks for 1A? Total marks. Yes, 20, which is 16 technical plus 4 professional 20. How many minutes you will allocate to this one? How many minutes? 36 minutes. Exactly. 20 marks multiplied by 1.8 minute per mark. So you have 36 minutes to do this task. Okay. What about 1B? 1B is 10 plus 4, 14. 14 multiplied by 1.8 is 14 multiplied by 1.8 is how much minutes? 25 minutes. So the first part was 36 minutes and the second part is, right. So what do we do? What do we do if the allowed time is up? For example, let's talk about first part. We have 36 minutes for 1A. We have 36 minutes for 1A. What do we do? If, our, if 36 minutes is up and still our answer is incomplete. Right. Should we leave the question incomplete? Is that what you are saying? Should we leave the question incomplete? Yes or no? Yes. You know, guys, <clears throat> it is easier said than done. Okay. All of you are, I, I am saying that if the time is up, stop writing and move to the next question. All of you are also saying that if the time is up, you will leave and next move to the next question. But it is e not that easy. When you are in the real exam, you will not have the guts to leave it. You will not have the guts to leave it incomplete, but still you must leave it and move to the next question. This is the strict discipline you must follow. Under exam stress, many students, they deviate from this and they start falling in the time trap. This is the yes, Abdullah Ab Ali Abbas, absolutely. This is the basic rule to pass that as soon as the time is up, you just complete that paragraph which you are doing, okay? Do not leave abruptly. At least complete that point or that particular paragraph and then move on. Even if the two points are remaining, forget about it, okay? Move to the next. Is this very clear? That if the allowed time is up, just complete that particular paragraph or point and then move to the next question. Even though one or two points are still pending, doesn't matter. You can always come back later on if you have time, but for the time being, you must follow this strict discipline of leaving that question incomplete and moving to the next question. Mona is asking, sir, what if I know how to build the remaining points? Doesn't matter. Even if you know the remaining points, but if the allowed time is up, you move. Khalas, no exception. You know the remaining points or you don't know the remaining points besides the point. If the allowed time is up, move on. It is a very, very basic rule and very difficult to apply under real exam situation, but you must have the balls, you must have the guts 
to do it if you want to pass. Okay, clear? Now, so the rule is 1.8 minutes per mark. 1.8 minutes per mark. So I have a question. How will you keep track of your time? How will you know that the allowed time is up? Tell me. How will you know that the allowed, because you know, when you are writing, when you are stressed out again and again, you will not keep track, right? Very good. I like your suggestions. No, Ibrahim. You must write the ending time at the bottom of your answer sheet. I repeat. You must write the ending time at the bottom of your answer sheet. I'll show you how. So again, I go back to my CBE. Task number one is uh, here. Huh? That's a task 1A. 1A is 20 marks. Hmm? For 20 marks, I need how many minutes? Uh, 20 into one point three. One thirty-six minutes, right? Okay, so when I'm drafting this question, let's say, okay, so before I start, I write, so let's say it is 10 a.m. Let's say it is 10 a.m. So 36 minutes means what? Let's say when you are starting this question, it is 10 a.m. So the starting time, you know, right, that you are starting at 10 a.m. So ending time would be 10, 36. You just write it here. And then you start uh, answering, answering. You see, but this ending time will always be in front of you. Okay. When you are typing, 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 this ending time is always in on front of your eyes. And as soon as 1036 is up, you will go to task 1B. Task 1B starting time is 1036. And uh, it is worth 14 marks. So for 14 marks, I need 25 minutes. So 1036 plus 25 is 1101. Okay, you put it in the last and then you start typing your answer, but you always will have your eyes on the ending time, which is 1101. As soon as 1101 is up, you move to the next question. Aswati, the exam screen shows the remaining time for the entire paper, not for each question, right? Yes, when, uh, so once, you've, uh, once the time is up, you just delete this time and move to the next question, okay? Don't forget to delete it. So in the end, you will delete the time and move, okay? No, Nafisa, this time planning is not during the 15 minutes because you don't know which question you will start from. This is actually when you start drafting a question. When you start drafting a question, at that time you decide the ending time. Uh, and then so, so for each requirement, you will have an ending time because you know it all depends on what time you are starting it. Is it too technical for you guys? So please don't complicate this thing. Huh? Don't overthink. It's very simple. 1.8 minutes per mark, right? 
the moment you start drafting at that time you will calculate what should be the ending time and you will quit writing move to the next question calculate the ending time for net question and start drafting once it's finished move to the next question calculate the time for the next question start drafting All right, guys. No, don't keep in your mind, Nidhi. This is what I'm saying. Don't keep the time in your mind because under stress situations, you might lose sight of it. Up to you guys, whatever works for you. I am sharing the best practices. This is the technique used by global prize winners. This is the technique I picked up from global prize winners of SBL. They note the ending time before they start drafting and then they move on to the next question. Rest, it's all up to you. Whatever is easy for you, the main thing is you must not overrun the time, the allowed time. And guys, you don't have watches. I'm seeing some very stupid comments. How do we know the time? You don't have watches? Too bad. If you don't have a watch, too bad. Nothing can be done. I will see you again in the next attempt then. Watch is not allowed? Are you crazy? There must be some time available on the screen or in the hall. There must be a clock. Don't talk about petty things or stupid things, please. Yes, smart watch is not allowed. A normal watch, yes. If you're on a center, there will be a watch. There must be some time. Anyways, I'm not going into this stupid discussion. All right. So are we very clear on time management? The first 15 minutes and the rest the drafting time. Everybody clear on this? Oh, excellent, excellent. Now, the second biggest weakness is linking with the exhibit. This is where a lot of students, they struggle, right? And uh, your answer has to be linked with the exhibits. You, you cannot give general answers, right? So what is the technique of linking your answers with the exhibits? So copy paste all tasks in respective answer sheet, read the task to identify the topic, take a quick look. So all this has been done. So we've done all this in the 15 minutes, right? Now, what do we do now? Once we are actually started drafting, you will need to read the relevant exhibit in detail and copy paste important information on the respective answer sheet. Okay. So when you are started drafting, we already know which exhibit pertains to that question. So you will need to read that exhibit properly and identify two or three important information and copy paste it on your respective answer sheet. Also browse through the pre-seen material which is available on the CB platform and copy paste relevant information on your answer sheet. So we, we, you, you know, it is expected that you are already familiar with the pre-seen. So you exactly know where to look for and from there you can pick some information. So you will need to combine information from these two sources. One from the new exhibits provided to you on the exam day. And also if you can recall, if there is some relevant information on the pre-scene, you can pick up from there. Bring this information on your answer sheet and then Start your point with a statement of fact, copy paste it from the exhibit, and then elaborate about its impact on the business. This is your actual answer. 
Do you understand? That you will need to identify few points from the exhibits. You will need to identify few points from pre-seen, if any. Bring them on your answer sheet as pointers. And then you can, you know, convert them into paragraphs, adding your own comments. What is the impact on the business? Single, single paragraph for each point. Again, this requires a lot of practice. Yes, Mahir. So, for example, uh, if it's a 20 marks question, we have 36 minutes, right? So in that 36 minutes, you will have to read that exhibit. I don't expect it will be a lengthy exhibit. It will be a small exhibit. Bring some points on your answer sheet and draft the points. All this is within the 36 minutes. There is no extra time outside 36 minutes. Whatever you are doing, 36 minutes, it's all included in 36 minutes. Is that clear? Wine, I'll do that tomorrow, okay? Yes, you need intense practice. Definitely, there is no doubt that you will need to spend a lot of time on the CBE platform so that your copy pasting speed and your all this is much faster. The more time you will spend on CBE platform, the more better for you. Ali, Baba, Ali Abbas is asking if the task is linked with two exhibits, doesn't matter. I will read both the exhibits and I will bring the points. So for practice purposes, somebody is asking, who's that? Hamid is asking, the, there is not much paper. So no, we will use the actual past papers. As I said, syllabus has not changed. So this technique is not new. We were also following the same technique in the previous SBL as well. We were reading the exhibits and we were copy pasting information on the answer sheet. So this is not new. You will have to use the actual past papers to practice your copy pasting uh, technique. Yes, Mohammed, all this will be covered in my practice revision classes, which will start from Tuesday. So all this will be, we will be actually doing all this practically in my revision practice classes. Uh, we will be doing at least four case studies and three mocks. So, you know, we will be doing all this. All right, guys. Number of points. How do we decide that how many points are we supposed to write? So, again, it's very simple. We will follow two marks per point. <clears throat> okay. We will follow the rule of two marks per point. So if it's a 10 marks question, how many points are we supposed to give? So you just divide total marks, divide by two, right? So if it's a 10 marks question, five points. If it's a 13 marks question, not seven, six to seven, not seven. If it's a 13 marks question, 13 divided by two is 6.5. So six to seven, depending on the availability of information. Minimum six, maximum seven. Clear? One point should be one paragraph. That is very important. Each point will be a new para. Do not try to squeeze two points in one para. Each point is one separate para. 
So if you need to write five points, I expect to see five paragraphs. Okay, is that clear? And what should be the length or size of your point? approximately three to four lines or sentences on your CB platform. It will be just three to four lines on your CB platform. It should not be too short. It should not be too lengthy. Three to four sentences is more than enough. The global prize winners told me that they wrote three sentences per point only. All right. And then try to give one extra point in each question, but this is subject to time management. Again, the global prize winners, they always try to give one extra point, but their speed was faster. So if your time allows you, then you can try and give one extra point. But if your time is up, you need to leave and move on. Any questions so far regarding number of points? Yes, no. Please let me know. Yes, no. All right. There are a couple of exceptions to this rule. You remember there is a question which says identify weakness and give recommendation. I showed in the format that if you get a question on identify risk and give recommendation, we need to use tabular format, right? So if you get this kind of a question, then two marks for weakness and two marks for recommendation, okay? So if you add two plus two, then this becomes four marks. So let's say, if the question is 20 marks, if the question is 20 marks and it says identify the weakness and give recommendation. So how many? Five plus five? Five weakness along with five recommendations, right? So you need to identify five weaknesses and then give five recommendations, one for each. Is that clear? So to calculate the number of points or number of weaknesses required, you will divide by four. Again, exactly same for identifying risk and give recommendation, same formula, two marks for risk, two marks for recommendation. So again, to calculate the number of risks you need to talk about, you will divide the total marks by four, so that you can calculate how many risks you need to identify and then give their recommendation. If the question is for 16 marks, if the question is for 16 marks, identify risk and give recommendation. How many risks? Four risks plus four recommendation. Perfect. Good guys, I'm impressed. All right. The next thing is format of your answer. How when you are drafting the format, how should we do? Prepare skeleton of the answer before you attempt the question. What do, you, what do I mean by skeleton? So if it's a format, make the format quickly main headings, closures, you know, make the skeleton of the answer so that you get rid of simple stuff quickly and then come to your actual body of the answer and drafting. Understood? That first make the format, give some broad headings and then start the thinking and the drafting process. 
use information from the scenario to start your point. Always use a sentence or an information from the exhibit to start your point. I call it the opening sentence of your point. I also call it the statement of fact because you are picking that sentence from the exhibit. Start with that sentence and then build your argument on that. Talk about the impact on the business. Okay. Adopt paragraph style of writing. Do not use bullet styles. Okay. Adopt paragraph style of drafting. And as I said earlier, each paragraph should be not more than three or four sentences. Give subheadings for each point. Now, this is very interesting because the global prize winners, they do this. So if I have to, so, okay. So if it's a 10 marks question, a normal question of 10 marks, how many points am I supposed to write? If it's a normal question, 10 marks, how many points? Five points. Excellent. Excellent. So these prize, global prize winners, they used to give subheadings for each point. So their all their point had a small, simple subheading. For example, what is the advantages of e-business? Can you think of three advantages of e-business? Globalization, more revenue, lower cost. You know? This is your subheading. Customer convenience. This will be your subheading. So if you're talking about globalization as the first advantage, the heading should be globalization. The next point when you are talking about lower costs, the heading will be lower cost. In the third point, when you are talking about customer convenience, the heading will be customer convenience. If the fourth point, you are talking about personalized marketing, the heading will be personalized market very simple basic subheading for each point so that the examiner knows what you're gonna talk about okay all right then i suggest that you leave one line between each paragraph presentation matters okay presentation matters so you must leave one um, send line between each paragraph so that the examiner is clearly able, distinctly able to see various points, various paragraphs separately. All right. Use the right format as required in the question. So if the question says briefing paper, then you must make a briefing paper. If the question says draft an email, then you must make an email. Look for stress words in the exhibits. What are stress words? Very significantly, extremely, notably, etc. These are stress words, which means that that particular information is very important. And try to use that information in your answer drafting. Try to use that sentence in your answer because it is it is something important that is why there is a stress word for example it is mentioned that there is significant competition if it says there is significant competition then it places some more emphasis on competition that there is significant competition then you must use these kind of information in your answer Okay, you must look for important sentences rather than less important sentences. Use tabular format for weakness and recommendation type questions and nil or minimum use of models. Again, this is 
from the global prize winners that they don't focus on models. They don't use models unnecessarily. They, they just use no model. They just give logical answers from the exhibits, like talk about the pros and the cons and the impacts rather than getting stuck in a model. Okay. Guys, any questions on the this slide, the format? Very good. All right, the last thing about exam technique is something which I called a bouncer question. So those of you who are familiar with, with cricket, with the game of cricket, there's a bouncer ball, a ball which is which goes over your head. It bounces so high that it crosses your head or it hits on your face. It's called a bouncer. That's why the batsmen, they wear helmets to protect their heads. What is a bouncer question? Can you guess? What do I mean by bouncer question? A question which goes over your head. A question which goes over your head. You have absolutely no clue what the fuck it, this is about. You know, it's not general knowledge. Excuse me. You are completely blank. Yes. Either you don't understand the requirement. It is something which is really tricky and you don't even understand the requirement. Or there is no information in the exhibit. Bottom line, you don't know what to do. That's a bouncer question. You absolutely have no clue what to do. Clear what is a bouncer question? Everybody, so those of you who have given SBL before, have you ever faced a bouncer question? Yes, in the previous attempt, question number one was a bouncer question. It was about culture and leadership styles. 90% of the students had no clue. Always, guys, always, always in SBL, there will be at least one bouncer question. Be mentally prepared. Be mentally prepared that there will be at least one bouncer question. It might be different for different students because you know uh, some. Uh, but what? But the bottom line is, it is some. It is a question which is the most difficult in your personal view, and you have no clue what how to do what to do. Now, can you guys imagine? What did the global prize winners do or did? What did the global prize winners did? did? So it was question number one. When did the global prize winners do this question? Yes, they did it in the last. Even though it was question number one, they immediately identified or sensed it that this question is very tricky. There is limited information or I don't have the theoretical grip or I don't know the cultural web model whatsoever. They immediately identified it that this was a tricky question, a bouncer question, and they pushed it to the last. They focused more on the easier questions. They grabbed marks through professional skills to giving through giving extra points. And then towards the end, they try to attempt 50-50 and then the time was up. All right. So what is the strategy for a bouncer question? The first strategy is attempt this question in the last. Never start with a bouncer question. Never do it in the middle. Always do it as your last question. That's rule number one. 
And then you can, you know, play around a bit. You can try to define a little bit. You can use the search find option in the CB platform to see if there is any information which you may have missed out. Um, you can summarize the current status or problems from the exhibits in your, your own words, talking about the root cause. And then try and briefly answer the requirements in the last paragraph of your answer. So these are some things which you might do to fill up space, right? And rather than leaving it empty, you can define, you can try and search on the exhibits through the search tool to see if any relevant information is there. You can explain the problem in your own words, or you just try to write something, whatever you understand. But the main thing is, do not use entire allowed time. What does, what does this mean? Do not use entire allowed time. So for example, if it's a 20 marks question, you are allowed 36 minutes, right? Do not consume the entire 36 minutes on the bouncer question. It's stupidity because you will not get marks. Save at least 10 minutes and use it to add more points to your other questions in order to get extra mark. Do you understand this? That if it's a bouncer question, you will really not know what to do. So then what's the point in spending full 36 minutes, all right? Just spend like 20 minutes, just fill up some space. And if you can save 10, 15 minutes, you can utilize that in your easier questions. Try to write one extra point so that you can cover up through that. Nice. Again, this one is easier said than done. Once you are under exam situation, you panic so much that you forget all these techniques and you fall in the time trap. The moment you fall in the time trap, you will not pass the paper. SBL 90% is about time management and exam techniques. Hmm? All right, so let me recap the exam techniques. I want to go through it one more time so that we are all on the same page. So the first thing we talked about was time management. Paper duration is three hour, 15 minute. We will spend the first 15 minutes on planning and the remaining on drafting. What do we do in the first 15 minutes? We will copy paste all the requirements. We will read the requirements to identify the topics. We will take a quick look at the exhibit to identify that this exhibit will be used in which question. And lastly, we will decide the sequence, which questions will we start from. Uh, regarding drafting, this is the rule, 1.8 minutes per total marks. And as soon as the allowed time is up, you will just complete that one paragraph and you will jump to the next question, even though you know the answers or the remaining points, but because the time is up, you will move. Supposing in the end, if there's a bouncer question and you have some 10, 15 minutes, you can utilize from that, you can come back and add your extra points or complete this point, right? How do we link? You will need to read the relevant exhibit. You will need to use some material from the pre-scene and using these sources, you will then draft your point and talk about its impact on the business. Number of points is pretty simple. You just divide by two to calculate the number of points. And for weakness recommendation or risk recommendation questions, you will divide by four to calculate the number of points. Format, make the skeleton before you actually start the drafting. 
Use information from the scenario to start your point. Your opening sentence is very important. It will give you some direction. So when you use sentence from the exhibit, you can build on it. You can continue on it and talk about its impact on the business. Okay. And then the strategy for bouncer question is that, you know, you must do it in the last and you must not use the entire time save a few minutes so that you can go back and add extra points to the easier questions. All right. Any questions on exam techniques? Okay, the last topic is for today, after this, we will end the session for tonight. The last topic is basically the interview with the SBL top global scorers. Okay. So these are the two guys who scored 92 marks. Okay. One is uh, Rahul. From South Africa, he scored 92 marks in March 2-3 attempt. And he was the global prize winner, which means that he scored the highest marks in the whole world in SBL. And the second student is Shikhai from Malaysia. He scored 92 in the last attempt, the same attempt in which you guys gave the cultural question, all those things, right? Uh, he was not the global prize winner. I think the global prize winner was 93 marks, but I was not able to catch hold of him. But these two guys, I took a live detailed interview. All right. I, I spoke with this guy in my June webinar, like we, I spoke 30 minutes and then students the, of that webinar, they were asking questions. And with this guy, I spoke in my reset orientation class a few weeks back. And the students who were attending that orientation, they were able to ask questions. So what I have done is I have summarized the important things which they were doing. I have summarized both the interviews and I've made a list of things which the global prize winners followed so that I know I wanted to share with all of you so that you guys can actually pick a few points from them, how they were able to score 92. And maybe, you know, if you can pick up a few points from their feedback, you might be able to pass with flying colors, right? Right. So what are the main takeaways from the interviews during the paper? So that four hours, so in, in June and March, the paper was four hours. So what was their mindset? What was their technique during those four hours? And both of them have said the same thing. I've just picked up the common things between the two. Both of them said, attempt easy questions first. This is what they actually did. They attempted easy questions first and do difficult or time trap questions in the last. So in the last paper, the June paper, the most difficult question was question number one, which was about some culture and leadership style, right? How many of you did it in the start? Please write me if you can remember. How many of you did it in the start and fall in the time trap? Quite a few. Whereas this guy, they, he did it in the last. Then the second most common thing between the two global winners were rigorous focus on time management. They were fiercely focusing on time management. Both of them writing wrote target ending time and as soon uh, you know, leave the question and move to the next question if target time is up. They were very, very disciplined about that. Even though if they knew the points, but if the time was up, they moved to the next question. Because 
in the end, if you have time, come back and finish the incomplete answer. Both of them did that. Then this one is interesting. Try to think of a real life example, if any, from the same industry. But now, since we will have pre-seen uh, case study, we will know what industry and we can think of some real life examples, which I will cover in my workshop. Use information from the scenario to start your point. Give one extra point for each question, but remaining within the allowed time. This is all coming from the two prize winners. Huh? Maximum three to four sentences per point. No lengthy elaborations. Give short subheadings for each point. No or very less use of models. Technical knowledge is not important application of knowledge was their main focus. Use of professional language and thinking like a CFO. These were the, the thoughts, the strategies of these two students during the paper. And I think most of this I covered in my exam techniques, but I just thought to share it with you in one summary, right? Now, what was their study plan during the preparation stage? How they were studying during the preparation stage? During last four weeks, focus on revising important topics only and not the entire syllabus. This was their strategy. That during the last four weeks, they just focused on important topics and not revising the entire syllabus. Are we guys into the last four weeks now? I think we are in the last four weeks. So this is what you need to do now. Some of you might be lagging behind. Just now focus on important topics only. So I have my top 25 important topics video. I have top 25 important topics handout. Just use that and forget about the book and the rest of the syllabus because simply you don't have time now. Give at least four hours each day during the last four weeks. So all of both of them they were actually very disciplined. They were, they are working students, but they made sure that they gave at least four hours each day during the last four weeks. So one of them was a working student, Rahul. He said that it is not possible for me to sit straight for four hours because I have work commitments and family commitments. So what he used to do was uh, before going to office in the morning, he used to give two hours. And then in the evening, once he come back, he used to give two hours. He split the four hours into two sittings. You can also do that. The bottom line is you need to give at least four hours each day for SBL. And then they said they focus 20% on theory and 80% on practice. So during the last four weeks, their focus was more on practice and using CBE platform. So they just spent 20% of their time on the topics and they spent 80% of their time doing the actual past papers and case studies. That is why they were saying that just focus on important topics so that you can spend more time on practice. So when you practice more, automatically your extra topics will get revised, right? Then they said, do eight to 10 case studies, including five time-based mocks on CBE platform. So they did at least eight case studies on CBE platform. And out of that eight, they did at least five time-based mock because they wanted to practice their time management. They wanted the brutal focus on time management. Bouncer, how to do, what to do, leave and move. All this will come through time-based practice. 
time-based mocks. And then they said, don't read examiner's answer. It is for educational purpose only, not practical under exam conditions. So they mentioned that they just looked at one or two examiner's answers just to get an idea, just to get a feel about the tone, the language, how the examiner is building. But they said that the examiner's answers are not realistic from an exam point of view. So do you know which answers they looked at? So when you don't look at the examiner's answer, where can you check your answers from? So yes, so I have my own drafted short answers from exam point of view. Both of them actually refer to that to you know match their answers and never use book or kit both of these guys never ever they used any book or any revision kit they just use all they did all the past papers on the cbe platform focusing on time management and just focusing on the top 25 topics interesting huh and then yes the main thing was this, during the paper, they were very sharp on time management. They, they did not lose their cool. They were focused because they had done so much practice, right? They had done so much practice, including five time-based mocks that they did not really stressed out during the paper. They were into the practice. So this was my you know, summary from the interview from both these guys. And if you want to look at the detailed discussion or the interview I had, uh, it's 30 minutes with each guy. It's available on this video. You can click it and you can easily actually listen to them talking all these things, whatever is easy for you. Right, guys. Technical articles I will cover tomorrow. I think there's a big article on project management. It's a huge topic. I want to do project management tomorrow along with a comprehensive practice question on that. And lastly, I just want to make a small quick announcement that my revision drafting classes, uh, it's a paid session. It is starting from 8th of August, which is Tuesday. What we will do is uh, we will do four case studies live, full case studies. We will do three mocks. Out of three mocks, I will check one mock and give you feedback. It includes detailed discussions and practice of the pre seen material, which will be published on 22nd August. It also includes, you know, for later viewing, the recordings are there and it includes grand revision. All this is part of the revision drafting. It is absolutely beneficial for research students or those students who want to improve their exam techniques, who want to improve their drafting, time management. This course is purely based on practice. There is no theoretical lectures in it. The investment is basically 100 US dollars and for Pakistan-based students, it's PKR 115,000. And this is where you can get more information, right? Um, this is the schedule. This is very important. So the revision classes, which are starting from Tuesday, this is the day-wise schedule. You can see it is very intense. Uh, we will be doing one case study over two days, right? So the X Marine day one, X Marine day two, then we will do Optima case study day one, Optima day two. And then we will have our first mock. We will have our second mock. We will have our third mock. Then we will discuss the pre seen paper. Then I will focus on risk management, internal controls separately, and then ultimately the grand revision three days before the paper. Um, so it's the pattern is two days class, one day off. Then two days class, one day off. Two days class, 
one day off. Class timing on weekdays, it is 7 p.m. Pakistan time. So it's evening. So in a, on a working day from Monday to Friday, it's um, 7 p.m. But if it's uh, if but if it's a weekend like Saturday or Sunday, it will be at 4 p.m. Okay. So this is the schedule. I will also share it in my paid groups now because this is the final schedule so that you can plan your availability accordingly, right? So that's my global WhatsApp group in case you have not, are not part of it. And these are the contact details for admissions and inquiries, this one, and this is my own personal WhatsApp number. So with this, I will end today's presentation and I will take some questions now. Let me just quickly go through the question. So the question which I've already answered, I will skip that. The grand revision is only for my paid students. It's not for self-study students. I'm really sorry. It's a very intense session. It's a very proprietary kind of a thing. So I'm unfortunately, the college doesn't allow me for self-study students to uh, participate in the grand revision. Yes, all this is included in the regular batch and the recent batch. It's part of your package. The duration of the class, yes, the duration of the class is four hours each day. Each class will be four hours. Four hours. Yes, uh, Aradhana, all my regular batch student, recent batch students are already part of this, okay? Four hours, four hours. Wait, Mahir, wait. Can we start the past paper now? So my paid students, I wait for me. We will do the past papers together. Self-study students can start on their own. Okay, study plan. I will share the study plan for self-study students tomorrow in tomorrow's webinar, okay? Usman, can you please stop sharing this stupid thing again and again? Uh, how can you enroll in revision class? Just uh, contact uh, WhatsApp the, on the number which I have provided. Yes, Mahir, yes. Uh, Ashwin, uh, I don't know, uh, I think yes, but I will find out next week. I'm just browsing through some questions. Yes, I will share this slide in the groups. I will share it tomorrow, day one and day two, okay, together. All right, guys, so I hope that you found this session useful. Today, I did not do any practice. I just wanted to focus on the exam techniques because that has changed because of the pre-scene thing. And I wanted to talk in detail about the pre-scene thing. All right, guys, signing off. Thank you and best of luck and bye-bye.